Hey guys, welcome back to Commercial Diving FAQ where we talk about all things commercial diving. In this video I'm going to be talking about crane ops subsea and how you can increase your safety factor and productivity levels in the water. Now I know most divers have an attention span of a goldfish so I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. I'm going to pack as much information to it as possible at the start of this video but if you do stick around to the end I've got a small video that I want to show you of a crane failure offshore in India that I took where a crane actually dropped a pipe onto a material barge. Now fortunately no one was hurt but it's definitely worth the watch so stick around. First tip, give them a distance bearing with the directional bearing for the crane. So. I want to slew right five meters. Now, there's three reasons why I want to do this, and all of them increase the safety factor of the movement. The first reason is there is a massive lag in communications, especially when it comes down to the all stops. Now, the communications go from the diver to the supervisor, and then the supervisor has to swap radios and then radio the crane to make the movement or give the all stop. So, by giving the distance measurement, it eliminates the need for that communication to happen before the crane actually stops where you want it to. Now, the second reason is overshoot. If the crane driver knows exactly how far to go, then he is gonna make that movement and then stop on his own accord, and it should leave you roughly in the right place. Now, if you were to give that distance measurement and he was waiting on your all stop, you would give that all stop, you'd have that lag in communications to get to the crane driver, and then he would stop, but what would happen is the block takes a little bit to catch up to the boom, so it would continue to move forward until eventually it caught up with the head of the boom. And the final reason is stored energy. Stored energy is a bit of a hard one to pick up on, but usually if you make a crane movement, that block should eventually follow. If you don't get any movement out of your block, although the crane is moving, you might think that there's something going on on the surface or they haven't made the move yet, but really they are moving. So if you give that distance measurement, they will all stop at however far you've told them. It'll stop a continuation of you telling them slew right, slew right, slew right, slew right, and nothing happening before something snaps. Now, the reasons why it could happen is a wire could be snagged up on a subsea structure, you could have something tied back against the thing you're trying to lift without you realizing it, or a few other reasons. But you're really eliminating or reducing the amount of stored energy that you have in that wire just in case it does get caught up. The second tip I've got for you is to add shackles to the side of something flat that you're trying to lift. Now, this is more for the top side guys, and you may be using riggers, but it's up to the divers to make sure that everything goes subsea as inspected by them before they go in the, before it goes in the water. So, if you're lifting something flat, and you try and put it down on the seabed, especially with just one diver, you're gonna get float, and that means it's gonna move around a little bit before it actually gets placed. Now, if you're trying to be specific in terms of the placement of this thing, uh, if you add shackles to one side of it to sit it on an angle slightly, you can touch down one point and then go to the other side and guide that down as well. It makes things a lot quicker, a lot easier, there's less fluffing around in the water and it makes you look more professional. Uh, the third tip's a industry standard, but it, I feel like it needs to be said here, and that is illuminate everything. Put light sticks on absolutely everything, from the crane hook, to the work basket, to whatever you're trying to lift, to the downline, to the, the launch and recovery basket, it doesn't matter. The, better, the more light sticks, the better in the water. Now, I know it's not efficient in terms of use of light sticks, but it really, it makes your job go so much quicker and easier when you've got light down there to see with. Now. If you're getting a crane sent down from the surface in low light conditions, it's really hard to see, and especially if you're tucked away in a safe area away from where the crane is actually coming down, it can be nearly impossible to see when it gets to the job. So, if you've got a light stick on it, you'll see it a mile away, you can say, got a visual, keep coming down, and it's just more professional. Right, next one. So the next tip I've got for you is use sacrificial markers to mark out your drop load area. Uh, what do I mean by sacrificial marker? Well, it could be a nut with a bit of rope on it and a light stick or absolutely anything to give you a visual reference point of where that load needs to be. Now, why would you need to use a marker if you can see the ground in front of you? Say for instance, you're using, you're on sandy bottom, okay? You've put something down on the ground, but the supervisor tells you it needs to be picked up and shifted two meters towards you or two meters to the right. Doesn't really matter. So you've got these sacrificial markers, these old rusty nuts with a bit of rope and uh, a light stick on it. You can then put that two meters away, 
and you've got a visual reference point of where you need to put the load down because once you pick it up and it starts floating around then you're not going to have a visual reference point of where it needs where it's come from to judge that two meters so as long as you have a place where you can put that down bob's your uncle the last thing I've got for you guys is probably one of the most important. It should have been at the start of the video, but here it is. And it's a combination of three things. Pinch points, body positioning, and situational awareness. There's a famous saying in the industry, don't put your fingers where you wouldn't put your cock. I know you wouldn't want to put your member anywhere that's going to get squished, so why would you put your hands there? If you always keep that in your mind, then you're never going to get your hands into an area where they might get pinched, especially when you're doing crane ops. Someone else is operating a crane, they can't see what you're doing. Uh, it's just common sense, really. Uh, your body positioning is always a key ingredient, and that comes with situational awareness, understanding where the crane movements are going to come from, and the directions that you're giving, are they relative to what the crane driver is seeing as well? So. I always have a little tip, I use one of the markers that I was talking about in the previous tips and I drop it on the crane side of where the load needs to be so that I know when I'm giving those directions, even if I'm disorientated, if I've spun around or if I'm looking back, I can see that marker, I can always understand that, all right, that is the visual point that the crane driver's got, that's how I need to give my directions. So even if it's my left, it's his right and so on and so forth. And the last thing about body positioning is whenever there's crane movement, especially coming from over top, you need to make sure that you're in a safe area, whether you're back at the launch and recovery area or whether you're under the bell or whether you're inside a subsea structure, you've got to have an understanding of where that load's coming from, where it's going to, making sure you're not underneath it, and also that your umbilical's always clear. Too many times I've seen guys drop a load on their umbilical in low visibility conditions and they've had to go and pick the load back up, fortunately not damage their umbilical, but the chances are that they could have and they could have been trapped there without a lifeline. So that's it. Right guys, if you found the information in this video helpful or informative in any way, please do give it a thumbs up, that'd be much appreciated and it would help our channel grow. Without further ado, here's the video that I was talking about of the crane failure in India, how it dropped the pipe onto a material barge with crew standing on it nearby. You'll see that everybody was alright, there was no injuries, but it was risky business. We'll see you next time.